Any facts, proof, or evidence discussed in this video is all alleged, as I have not experienced it or witnessed it firsthand. Anything that I discussed is what I have seen online through pictures, screenshots, videos, and clips, either posted by the discussed parties or posted by those directly involved with them. And any opinions stated in this video are my own. This video is not sponsored or endorsed. No one requested this. No one had a hand in making it except me. If you've been watching and following my YouTube channel for the past year, then you will know that this is not typically the type of content that I make. Although I primarily built my channel on making drama and commentary and deep dive videos surrounding YouTubers, influencers, and celebrities, I quit doing that. I took a break from YouTube for a year and I came back and since have been making videos about movies, TV shows, and reality TV that is generally lighthearted in nature. I have made a few videos about YouTubers since coming back, but those have either been in the reactionary style or something positive like a career evolution. However, today's video is quite different and sort of a true to form video as I am coming back to the type of videos I made in the past and breaking the structure and scheduling of the type of content that I make now because of the gravity and seriousness of the situation. I don't believe that what I am about to discuss is just another YouTube drama and I feel as though it needs to be taken with a similar seriousness as the like of the Shane Dawson controversy or the likes of which the James Charles controversy should have been taken in. This situation needs more eyes and needs more discussions and although I don't make videos like this anymore I know there are a lot of people who are still subscribed to me who subscribe to me for these kinds of videos and those who have continued to watch me even though I make different content now and I'm hoping that I can use the platform that I have to bring awareness to people even if you are not someone who watches the creator I'm about to discuss you may have people in your life Life, especially minors, whether that is a child, a sibling, a nephew, a niece, or a cousin, who potentially watches this person. There is a victim in this story who has been harmed by the YouTuber that we will be discussing, and there are countless other victims who are coming out with their stories, and countless others who are too afraid to come out and speak about what happened to them, and countless more who don't even realize the harmful things that happened to them. And it's not just this influencer, there are many others causing harm online, and there's a bigger discussion at play here. There's a a discussion about parasocial relationships, a discussion about the safety of minors, and a discussion about the power imbalances between an influencer and a fan. So the two parties that we will be discussing today is Colleen Ballinger and Adam McIntyre. Colleen Ballinger is a YouTuber who has been on the platform for a very long time. She has millions of followers and fans. She goes on tours, sells merch, sells books. She's even been involved in traditional media where she had a Netflix show and has been on some Tonight shows and whatnot. The main reason that she grew to popularity is because of a character that she created called Miranda Sings. Miranda Sings is um, very peculiar in nature and makes a lot of jokes that at the time many thought were funny but now realize are inappropriate but at the end of the day Colleen just says that it's satire. The other party is Adam McIntyre. He is a drama commentary YouTuber. For those of you who don't know what is going on I will briefly give you an overview of the situation. I have two videos linked in the description that you can watch after this if you would like to see more of what happened especially because there is a lot of clips and pictures and screenshots that I don't want to see again. So it's up to you whether you'd like like to go ahead and watch them but you know trigger warning this is some very serious stuff. For those of you who follow me on Instagram and Twitter or on my Patreon or who checked out the last video or second last video of mine then you may know that I've recently undergone a nasal surgery. I had a sinus and nose procedure done and I've just been recovering from surgery for the past week and a half so I was going to come back and film a video in a couple days but I'm feeling well enough and I've had nothing but time to lay in bed and follow this entire situation and the the more that it has come out about it, the more that I felt compelled to discuss it. I was a fan of Miranda Sings growing up, as was a good friend of mine, as was my younger sister. My older sister even became a fan of Colleen during her pregnancy. Even at my school play, which was a self-written skit sort of play, my friend actually played the Miranda Sings character in the show. Needless to say, she was also a big part of my childhood, as was Shane Dawson which is why I was so compelled to speak about that situation. You know, even when I spoke about influences that I was never a fan of, it was challenging, but it's definitely a lot more challenging when I speak about the wrongdoings of an influencer that I was a fan of or was a fan of when I was a child or a teenager. It definitely stings a little bit more because you think about all of the memories that you had, you know, watching those YouTubers, buying their merch, 
you know, following them, supporting them, buying and reading their books. And it's really difficult to think about, but even more difficult to imagine what the people who had direct contact with these influences are going through and went through like Adam McIntyre. So without further ado, let's get into this discussion. So the first part of this video is going to be a little bit scripted just because I want to give you an overview of the situation without messing anything up and I want to give you the so-called facts. Remember I said it is a legend, although there's some pretty cut and dry proof, but that being said, I am not a lawyer, so I will not speak on that. I will just tell you what I have seen through my own secondhand information. This all started when a now YouTuber, Adam McIntyre, was a young teenager around 13 to 14 years old. He was a fan of Miranda Sings, went to her shows and her meet and greets, and eventually he was put into an exclusive group chat with Colleen, her friend and sort of business partner Corey, as well as a bunch of other fans, majority of which were minors. There are about 20 or so fans in this group chat called the Weenie Babies. Adam says that Colleen even shared her direct Snapchat with him. In both the Snapchat messages and group chat, Colleen and Corey would make inappropriate jokes with the minors and have inappropriate discussions with them. Colleen would even discuss her intimate life with her husband and the breakdown of their marriage and then the beginning of her relationship with her now husband. And obviously a lot happened during these years that you can now find. It has become public information. But fast forward to around 2017 where the Miranda Sings character was starting to lose popularity and becoming stale. Most likely due to people like myself who were a fan of her at the time growing up, maturing, and no longer finding her funny. But also because it was during a time where people were starting to become more sensitive or critical of jokes that were offensive. And Colleen felt a little bit stuck with her Miranda Sings character, considering the way that she had built the character was off of making inappropriate, creepy, or offensive jokes. Something that is worthy to note is that Colleen Bellinger, now that I've seen a lot of these videos that were posted on her own channel, did and said many inappropriate things when out of the Miranda character, like making fun of various people's accents or races, or discussing abuse of various pets filming a deceased cat on the road, or filming a homeless person sleeping in a laundromat. Really, the list goes on, and like I said, check the description. But what's interesting is it's quite obvious and evident that Colleen was using Miranda as a vessel to voice the discriminatory and offensive jokes that she would have liked to make herself, but obviously couldn't get away with, so she did it through a character. And if you don't believe me, she basically confirmed this when she went on The Tonight Show, and the host asked her if she ever agrees with some of the jokes that Miranda makes, and she says, yes, she does. In fact, she says a lot of the stuff through Miranda that she knows she can never say herself. The host even warned her not to tell people that secret. Although that's probably a little bit too late considering you're on a live talk show. So Colleen did what many of her colleagues had done in the past and leveraged her parallel social relationship with Adam. During this time, she would come to him quite a bit, according to him, asking for ideas for videos and posts for mainly the Miranda Sings character, but also for her own personal Colleen channel. And due to the decline and staleness of the Miranda character, Colleen unofficially hired Adam as an unpaid intern with the promise that if everything went well, she would actually hire him to manage the Miranda Sings social media account. So she gave him access by giving him the password to the Miranda Sings Twitter account and basically said, you can make whatever post you want, just send them to me first so that I can approve them. That is exactly what he did, as well as posing as the Miranda Sings character by chatting with Miranda Sings fans in group chats and in Twitter replies, of which Colleen was aware and approved of. However, this all came to a halt when Adam sent a post to Colleen for approval about Miranda Sings coming out. So they were going to tease that Miranda Sings was coming out with the rainbow flag behind her, and then the next day, the joke was that she was going to come out as a Megan Trainer fan. This did not go over very well, as a lot of the fans and people outside of the fandom felt as though Miranda Sings or Colleen was queer baiting. And Colleen kind of freaked out. Obviously, during this time, a lot of influences were getting cancelled. And she took down the post and told Adam, you know, we just got to be very careful. People are so sensitive. I don't want to have to issue an apology or things to escalate. So obviously, Adam thought, you know, it was a mistake. It was fine. But he started to freak out when Colleen just cut contact with him entirely. And the other fans and minors within the group chat turned on him. And basically, the blame was placed on Adam. So 
in 2020, Adam came out with a video when he was 17 years old titled Colleen Stop Lying, in which he explained what really went down behind the scenes. And he also explained further how inappropriate the relationship Colleen had with him and some of the other minors. Specifically, one thing that people noted was that she and Corey joked about in a live stream some lingerie that they had and how funny it would be to send it in the mail to Adam and how funny his parents' reactions would be, full well knowing how inappropriate it is because of how they discussed how his parents would react, but they mailed it to him anyway. Adam still has them and showed them in the video as proof. And all this started blowing up in Colleen's face. And Colleen came out two weeks later with an apology video titled Addressing Everything. Now, before we get into Colleen's apology, some may and have said that Adam making that video was opportunistic and was a way for him to gain attention and followers. However, when you really think about it, especially with everything that's come out, it does not strike me as something that is a ploy for attention or revenge. Because when you really look at the previous situations, I mean, for example, if you look at the minors that came out against James Charles, yes, his career was damaged a little bit, but he's still doing fine. And a lot of those people that came out against him with their stories, the victims, are completely ghost on social media and were run off by his fans. So whenever a fan comes out against a influencer or creator with millions of followers, it doesn't always end well for them. Most of the time it doesn't. So Adam coming out and speaking about this was actually very risky in his part. And I highly doubt that the reason he did it was for attention or revenge because that was very unlikely to be the case. I genuinely feel that obviously he was hurt by the way that Colleen treated him after everything that he had done for her. Genuinely because he thought he made a mistake and he just was doing exactly what she told him to do. And also because his friends and other fans were turning against him. And also I think with age, Adam obviously started to realize how inappropriate the relationship that he had had with Colleen from 13 all the way to 17 was and it was now speaking about it but we later discovered that he could have come out with a lot more about her and chose not to because Adam has said that he did not want to air that you know so that the public would know about it or his family and friends even though if he was really looking for revenge or to gain followers he could have simply showed all of the proof that he had through the screenshots and whatever else and that would have really worked in his favor but he didn't which to me is one of the many reasons I feel as though his video was genuine however that was not the opinion of many when Colleen came out with her apology video two weeks after his in her video Colleen tries to explain herself and apologize and take accountability but ultimately she just shifts the focus to Adam and his parents she also cites similar experiences that Adam has had with her with her other experiences with fans to establish how she has good faith relationships with them and how she was unaware at the time that her actions towards Adam were harmful to him. She ended off the video by essentially posing herself as the victim and discussing the threats that she had been receiving and ultimately she won the sympathy vote because majority sided with her and her fans of which Adam used to be one of turned on their own. They cyber bullied a 17 year old child victim because they didn't like that he had upset their 30 something year old millions of followers youtuber idol because he discussed his negative experience with her in recent times adam has since discussed how he felt like no one believed him and you can really only imagine the negative impact that this whole public situation had on his mental health. Those are hundreds and thousands of people sending online threats and hate on behalf of an adult with millions of followers in their 30s. And before anyone tries to play the ages card, let's keep in mind that when I'm saying this, it's because beyond the age of 25, your frontal cortex is developed and you are definitely an adult at that point. And he was a minor, okay? So I wouldn't care if she was 26. I wouldn't care if she was 56. Really, I'm just saying that so you realize that age difference and the power imbalance. Not only did her fans come to defense, but many influences themselves, such as Kendall Ray, who has now since apologized, Todrick Hall, and James Charles, which, you know, given his history with minors, should really tell you something. So essentially, Colleen went back to her regular scheduled program while Adam was left to rebuild and recover. So fast forward from 2020 to 2023, and a creator by the name of Cody Rance uploaded a video titled, Why I Left the Colleen Ballinger Fanda. So, Cody Rance is a YouTuber slash online personality who gained popularity back in the day for what their name says, Cody Rance. They made a rant video about James Charles's palette, staining their eyes, and then from that point onwards, I think they just continued to make rant videos about various other influences. Cody Rance is in a similar age, I think, to Colleen. I believe they were like in their late 20s 
when they're a fan of Colleen and now I've heard that they're in their 30s, so definitely not a minor now or back when the situation took place. So Cody was also in a group chat with Colleen back in the day and they supported Colleen in 2020, but have now chosen to come out and denounce her and Corey and provide proof of the inappropriate relationships that they had with minors like Ada. Cody claims that when they were in the group chat, they were unaware that there were minors in there and that they should have done their research, especially considering they used to write fan fiction about Colleen's boyfriend or husband, Eric, and they would include the names of some of the minors in the group chat in the fanfiction, which had, as fanfictions do, a lot of inappropriate content. Cody also claims that Corey and Colleen coerced them into making a video about Adam, and they believe it was to test the public and see how much backlash Cody got in defending Colleen, so that Colleen was more prepared on what to discuss in her apology video. So now, two or three weeks ago, Cody has come out with this video denouncing Colleen and providing the proof to exonerate Adam and help the public actually believe that what he was saying was true. Because remember, Adam didn't want to share the screenshots and the proof because he didn't want all of that being exposed to the public or to his family or friends because, you know, he was embarrassed, ashamed, whatever. But, you know, Adam said he was upset by this, but ultimately grateful in hindsight because now that Cody has exposed this information, a lot of people are believing Adam and apologizing for not believing him back in 2020 and coming to his side and going against Colleen. And Adam and Cody seem to be on good terms. They even went on some sort of Skype call together in one of Adam's videos. However, it then came out that the real reason that Cody even made this video, according to herself, was because they wanted views and money to be able to buy a new laptop and pay their bills. And they did not have true intentions behind this. They had an emotional breakdown on a live stream and then deleted all of their YouTube videos off of their channel and there's no longer anything there. Obviously, this is just another spanner in the works for Adam because he you know, forgave Cody, and then all of a sudden Cody betrayed him yet again. And to be honest, I thought it was fishy from the start, because the real question is, why did Cody sit on this information for three years when they had a platform and they had access to the information that could have exonerated Adam? It's because they were doing it for their own personal gain. Since this event, Adam has further been discussing the situation on his YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, detailing a lot of what he went through during the many years of him having contact with Colleen and Corey. He has shown many screenshots and videos to back up his claims, as well as had two other members of the group chat that he was in come onto his channel and speak about their experience. And beyond people who were even in the group chat coming out and speaking about their experience, there are now so many other victims of Colleen or Corey's really inappropriate behavior coming out and discussing what they experienced when they were minors. Adam has stated that a lot of the reason he is doing this is because he felt like he couldn't defend himself those many years ago. And now he is 20 years old, he is an adult, and he wants to defend his teenage self. He wants to defend his 17-year-old self when he felt like no one believed. Him. He's also giving an insight into how all of this is affecting his mental health. He has said that he has booked an appointment with a therapist who specializes in childhood trauma. He's even had to file a police report because he went to the police to warn them about all of Colleen's fans that were trying to dox him or his family's addresses or threaten him, his family, his friends, or his pets with violence. So now this is becoming a legal matter, you know, as it should, but Adam maybe didn't feel ready to do that, but was forced into it because of the threats that were made against him by by Colleen's fans, of which she has done nothing to try and stop them or calm them down. And I've been watching Adam's videos, some of which are vlogs. He is struggling to sleep, he's struggling to take care of himself or be social. He speaks about how he feels like he can't be away from his phone because he doesn't know when anything is going to come out, when he might need to defend himself, when new information comes out, and this is what is affecting him. And this goes beyond just some sort of phone addiction, social media addiction. I honestly think, and I'm not a professional, this whole situation to me, it seems like the natural human response when something serious, scary, or traumatic happens, which is the fight or flight response, of which Adam is choosing to fight because he felt like he couldn't back then, and Colleen is choosing to flight. She has not addressed this or made a statement about this in the two weeks that it has come out. Colleen is continuing to do her Miranda Sings tour, of which there are segments about being cancelled and making BS apology videos. I find that to be very interesting. She has said nothing to her fans to try and stop them from attacking Adam. And essentially that's what to me this seems like because a lot of people are out on social media saying that Adam is milking the situation. He's making so many videos about it. He's doing exactly what he did back in 2020, trying to get attention, followers, views, or money. When really, if you think with just an ounce of logic, that's evidently not the case. I would argue that a lot of his videos probably aren't even able to be monetized by YouTube considering 
the serious nature of them. And you know, when you look at Adam's channel, he posts videos every day anyway, so he's having to take a break from talking about all the other stuff going on on the internet that he would normally talk about to talk about this Colleen situation that directly affects him. This is not just some story he's covering. This is his story. This is something he's directly involved in. This is him finally getting a sense of justice for what he went through three years ago and the many years beyond that. So I think that the people making those claims really need to take a step back, think with logic, try and have a little bit of empathy, and really try and detach themselves from the parasocial relationship that they might have with Colleen, or just try and be a human being and empathize. I genuinely don't understand how anybody can be reacting in that way when we're talking about a minor, someone who was a child and an adult. Do you not see how messed up that is? Alrighty, so that's kind of all the information that I really wanted to get right and discuss. But, you know, I will point you in the direction of those two videos I linked down below. I've watched quite a few videos on this topic. The main two that I want to point you towards is one by Adam McIntyre himself. And this video, he did a deep dive into a lot of stuff about Colleen or Miranda that I had never, ever seen before, as well as Corey, actually. And it's funny to me because it's not even like he had to dig through to find this stuff or it was private information that he had received. A lot of the stuff that he showed in his video is public. It's out there for anyone to watch. And that's what's kind of scary is you don't even know, like you could be watching an influencer, you don't even know the type of stuff that they've said or done in their past. The clips and videos that I saw that he got off of Colleen or Miranda's channel herself were so incredibly disturbing. The way that she treats her pets was difficult for me to watch as someone who loves animals. The way that she made fun of people who were different from her was really disturbing, you know, whether it was stuff that was about trans people or people of different ethnicities, you know, even stuff that was fat phobic. Just very disturbing and really makes me uncomfortable to think about the fact that I watched and supported her growing up. Like, I bought her book. I watched her videos. Um, I told other people to watch her because I thought she was funny. And I almost went to one of her shows. I had a friend who went to one of her shows and met her. I was so jealous of her. Now to hear about the stuff that actually happens at her shows and some of the people that are brought onto stage and the stuff that has happened to them, it's just, it's really eye-opening and really makes you want to be careful about who you support, especially those people who have been online for such a long time, you know, and how a lot of them handle these situations. You know, I know majority of my audience are adults and maybe that's actually a good thing because I have younger brothers, you know, they're not even teenagers yet. And when I see or hear about people they're watching, I'll tell their father. I'll be like, don't let them watch that. Don't let them watch him. He's very inappropriate. I remember they used to watch Logan and Jake Paul. You know, just stuff like that. I feel like when it comes to movies and TV shows or even music, you know, there's ratings for that. It's so clearly identifiable. There's laws in place. There's all these things in place to protect people who are not old enough to be witnessing those things from watching it. Growing up, my mom was so strict about not letting me watch anything that was age-restricted for an age that I was not old enough to watch. But YouTube? That was free range because obviously she didn't understand it. She didn't get it. And I'm not placing blame on parents or adults. I'm just saying keep better watch of the children in your life, whether they're your child, your sibling, your niece, your nephew, your cousin, but also in a bigger scale, YouTube. I mean, we've been known that YouTube really, I, I feel weird saying this because I want to be careful because I already feel as someone who posts YouTube videos that YouTube has become quite difficult and restrictive for a lot of creators online. You know, I've been on YouTube now since the end of 2017 making content. That's what, almost five years. And it's been increasingly difficult to post videos online. But I think YouTube needs to shift their focus in other directions, you know? They try this whole, oh, is this video safe for kids? Which, by the way, I click no on every single one of my videos. But I don't think that's enough. Then when they turn comments off on family channels, I don't think that's enough. YouTube really needs to do a better job of protecting minors on their platform. I don't know how, but at the end of the day, that's not my job. But they really need to do a better job because this type of stuff that's coming out, it's only going to keep happening more. Not to mention all the family vloggers, those kids that are now getting old enough to have a voice and speak about how they're uncomfortable with this. You know, Colleen as well, she would post videos, all that does post video all the time of her children. I, I, you guys know if you watch me back in the day about how I feel about family vloggers, but I just feel as though the way that minors are being treated online by influencers or are able to watch stuff that they shouldn't is just really scary and upsetting. And we're now seeing the repercussions of it. This 
is it in real time? This is someone who is now 20, who, as a minor, was affected by the shortcomings and failures of these influencers and YouTubers, and in some ways the YouTube platform itself. I just want to say that I really, really hope that Adam is doing as best as he can. I hope he is okay and that he has support. My DMs are always open if he ever wants to talk. Um... And I just, I wish him the best. I can't even imagine what he is going through. You know, I've been through some very minuscule online stuff, um, but nothing to this extent. And my brain can't even wrap my head around what it would be like. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I want to have a healthy discussion. And please, you know, don't even bother interacting with Colleen or her fans. Just the best you can do in these situations is, you know, you can inform people about it and you can just ignore her. Like, don't watch her content, don't buy her stuff, don't do any of that if that's how you choose to send your message. I'm not telling you what to do. What I am telling you is not to send hate to other people. Even if they send it your way, like, tit for tat, all that kind of stuff, just block, okay? I don't want to incite anything like that. But yeah, that's it for me in this video, guys. I feel like I'm just rambling at this point. I hope that I got my message across. Um, I'm a bit rusty and out of practice when it comes to talking about stuff like this. But um, I'm doing a lot better. I'm recovering from my surgery, and I'll be back uh, probably in a week or two with my next YouTube video. It's going to be the 365 days final movie. I'm going to do my reaction to that. As always, the extended and uncensored version on Patreon. Um, and then I'm working on my Vampire Diaries Season 2 video. Uh, obviously, a Kardashians video will be up soon too. You know, all that kind of stuff. Check the description for all that. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got something from this video. I hope you're doing well. And I will hope to see my next video. And I hope that you have a great day or night wherever you are in the world. Bye!